Kevin Bieksa is now uh, joining us from somewhere lavish in California. Forgive me, Kevin. Where exactly are you again? I'm at home. I'm in Newport, Newport Beach. Newport California. Beach. Beautiful. How long have you lived there? How long has that been home for you? I've since when I got traded to Anaheim, we uh, we bought in this neighborhood and we've stayed. So it's been this is the fifth year, I think. It's been beautiful. Must be nice. Uh, <laughs> we're just sitting we have, here. We jealous probably have right the now, same weather there. up here, is, is, <laughs> and we're just jealous human beings. Uh, let's start with the Canucks. We got a lot to talk about with you. Let's start with the Canucks, though. And to go with what what McCall just said in terms of listen, it's one of eighty two tonight. However, can it at times occasionally not be one of eighty two? Like, what would a win mean for that young team this evening? Well, I'm just listening to what you guys were just talking about. And JT Miller, it's funny. Every time I, I've been on the panel with Hockey Night in Canada, it seems like we talk about JT Miller during the Canuck games because, in, in my opinion, he's been driving the bus for that team. Hmm. And they have a lot of key players to their team. But for the way he plays and how consistent he plays and how hard he plays, he does all the little things right. And that's something that guys on the team feed off of, and it's contagious. And that's the reason why these guys are winning so many games now, and I think they've won seven in a row. It's not because the skill guys are putting points on the board. It's because guys like him are blocking shots from 30 feet away when it hurts. Guys like him are killing penalties. Guys like him are winning all the battles to get pucks back, going to the dirty areas. And like I said, that becomes contagious. So when you go back to his old team, and I don't know if that's the way it quite went, how they said, screw you, we're not going to pay you. <laughs> but, but but anyways, anytime you play your old team, you want, you want to have a good game and you want to kind of stick it to them a bit and let them know, you know what, you kind of gave up on me, you made a mistake. And I think the team's going to jump on his back and they're going to try to get him the win. And to, to, to have eight in a row would be huge for this team moving forward for confidence. All right, we know the Canucks got off to that good start, and then they followed with just one win in their next eight. They had three wins in their next 12, and now we see this run where they're winning seven in a row. Are the the little things that you're talking about with JT Miller the difference between being a good hockey team and a consistently good hockey team? Yeah, it's a roller coaster of a season so far. And, yeah, I think think playing – a little bit more consistent for these guys is going to be something they're going to have to learn. It's it, your bad can't be that bad. So when you're off and your team's not playing well, you have a system and you have a process that you can revert back to and, you know, hang in some of those games where you're not quite playing your best and, and maybe win some of them. But this is, this is a team that's come a long way and, and they're still learning how to win because, you know, I don't think they've made the playoffs for four or five years ever since they let some defensemen go. And it's going to take a while for them to learn how to win these games again and be a team that can consistently win. And, you know, I, I just think some games that I've watched them this year, they've been a little bit loose with their puck management and they played a little bit too high risk. So I think that's why they're probably in this win streak right now is because they're managing the puck a lot better. They're not being as, as high risk. And, you know, they're playing a team tonight that loves to trade chances. So. I don't think they should really try to get sucked into that kind of game. Stick to what's working for them. Right, Kevin, this defenseman they let go, who do you speak of? I don't know. He was a right-hand shot. I can't remember oh, exactly. Yeah. I thought name. they were valuable right-hand yeah, shot. Yeah, valuable shot. They were very well, he, Yeah, I know he had a lot of points, and he was really tough, and he was, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I just remember being a good player. All right. Well, if the name, if the name comes, you yeah. let us know, because yeah. we, we're here for another uh, 10, 10 minutes or so. <laughs> um, all right, Kevin, let's move on. And, and, and I want to ask you this next question in the vein of a guy who – who knows what it's like to play the blue line in a league that good. When you see something happen last night that happened to Morgan Riley, as a guy who knows the position, who had, who had good nights and bad nights, what went through your head? Well, it's just unfortunate that Morgan Riley is going to be associated with this move for the rest of his life. And it's just a, it's a showcase here of a lot of things by McDavid. You know, obviously his skating is, he's one of the best in the league, but his hockey sense and his and his hands are really showcased here for me. And, and a lot of people have tried this move before. It's a change of pace and change of gears. What he does when he gets the puck is he slows down, and it looks like he's going to wait for his guy to join the play. And then, boom, quick move outside. Hands are working quicker than quicker than his feet, or as quick as his feet. And he t- and he and he just kicks it into gear, right? So when he slows down, what that forces Morgan Riley to do is he has to slow down and he has to keep that gap tight, the distance tight. And when he turns it into first gear, you can't change gears as quickly skating backwards as you can forward. So this this makes it really tough for Morgan Riley. I mean, the only thing he could have done a little bit better is maybe get like a little body on him or something. But 
that's an elite move by an elite player right there. And it's just it's tough for Morgan Riley that he's going to have to watch that over and over again. He's had to watch it if he was watching the show about 45 yeah. times because we keep showing Sorry, <laughs> Sorry Morgan. Let me, let me ask you this. Did, do, do you think in his periphery, as McDavid is looking towards the neutral zone, he saw Morgan Riley's leg come up to cross over? and Because that's another part of it to me. Everything that you mentioned, I'm in awe of. If he also saw the leg, the right leg pop up as if he's going to cross over and did it on the crossover too, like my guy is ridiculous. He is ridiculous, but he waited for that crossover, didn't he? I, I, yeah, and forwards try to do this, right? Yeah. They try to get the defense. When as soon as you and I t- teach this to my twelve year olds, like as soon as you get the guy to cross over, you cut back the other way and you take it around him outside. And if you look at the replays, because you guys are showing it a thousand times here. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look like he's looking at Morgan Riley, no. but I think he just knows human nature that he's as he veers to the middle, he knows Morgan Riley at some point is going to probably cross over with him. Right. And he, he just lures him in with this look. I think all along McDavid knows he's not waiting for that guy to catch up. I think he's just trying to lure him in and and then change gears and take it outside like he did. And I think it worked a lot better than than he might have even thought, but Again, there's only some people that can that can get their hands and their feet moving that quick and have that high of hockey IQ. Kevin, what was the moment during your playing career where where you just got got? Like, what's the one you still think about? Is there one? Yeah, well, I mean, I try not to think of them. I try to forget <laughs> about them. So, so when I I took pride in not getting beat, if, if a guy like that would would beat me, I'd just maul him and. <laughs> pull him down, trip on You know what? If it if it turns into a penalty shot, not my problem, right? <laughs> yeah, put it on the goalie. Yeah, I would. I so if I ever got and not even went in practice, if a guy got a step on me and beat me in practice, I would just chop him down, <laughs> and then they would get mad at me. And I'm like, well, tough luck, you know. Like I don't like getting beat, but there was one time, and my son asked me, he's like, you never got beat, Dad. You never got beat. I go, yeah, I remember this one time I got beat in Washington, and I think it was Brooks. Brooks like and he caught a pass behind him and I kind of lunged forward and he did the old between the legs and went around me and scored and I remember after he scored I just gave him a vicious cross check to the ribs like <laughs> I wasn't happy with that but it, luckily it didn't happen too often because like I said I would just take the guy down and take a penalty I uh it reminds I used to play old timers with my old man and they're a pretty good skate and there was one guy who I ever, if I ever tried to walk around him, he would just take the tip of his stick and pitch fork just above my ankle so that oh, you get the speed sucks. wobble. And it was like, it, it was almost like you're going to dislocate your knee every time. It was the greatest little move that I'd ever seen in my life. And after about three times, I'm like, I am not going to try and go around the outside of this guy ever again. Because no. he would just, just above, you know, when the, the ankle stops on the skate. And he would just yeah. get you right in the fibula there. Boom. And it would scare the bleep out of me every time. Yeah, he's he's a dirty player. I wouldn't look like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not my style, not personally. I, but not but your that, style. Guy, that guy's dirty, I think. <laughs> and again, and, and Kevin, we, we talked about this earlier. A credit to Morgan for coming out and speaking to the media when really he didn't have to. Could have taken the night off. But uh, he did, and I give him full credit for that because – God knows what his social media feed was looking like at that point. Um, I want to ask about the comments that we heard from Carey Price, who I don't know if you heard it, but he said uh, he was beyond the point of frustration. Habs have lost six in a row. They've got a bunch of injuries. This is bordering on another lost year for the Montreal Canadiens and specifically Carey Price. And someone wrote into the show and said, Charlie, I'll give him credit for it, said, uh, are are we going to see – Carey Price retire without a legitimate shot at a Stanley Cup. Do you think like we're bordering on that, or is that just down the road and let's figure it out as the Habs move along here? Well, I don't know. It, it just seems every season that Montreal has this really big lull where they lose a whole bunch of games and they basically just take themselves out of playoff contention, right? Or they just have this lull where they just lose all their confidence in their game and it takes them – a long time to find it afterwards. So uh, I don't know. Like I, I'm hoping the guy gets uh, a chance. You know, I mean, actually, I don't really care either way. But for his sake, uh, you know, hopefully he gets a chance. Um, but he's in a pretty tough division, right? And if yeah. you if you're not going to be a team that can defend and and then on the flip side, you got to be a team that can score goals in that division to win because it seems like you're playing Tampa and Toronto and and Boston. These guys score like four or five goals a game. So. 
it's a tough division to compete in. And I just, I just don't really know what Montreal's identity is. Right. I never really did. Right. Like I knew back in the day they were small and skilled and, you know, but they got like big D like, I just don't know what their, what their identity is. And I, I don't think a lot of people do. And I don't think, I'm not even sure if they know. Yeah. I don't so, think they do. Yeah. But it's, it's just, it's unfortunate for, for Carrie, but at the end of the day, I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, what I remember Henrik Sedin told Roberto Luongo in the dressing room once in Colorado, just stop the puck, Lou. So all Kerry <laughs> Price has to do is just stop the puck and not worry about everything else. No, to be fair about it, you know, aside from that first month, Carey Price has been average to below average statistically this season. Let's be honest about it. Yeah, but how much of that has to do I'm with, with Carey Price? How much of that? I mean, I'm you could look you, at the last three years and say that. Or how, I mean, we're talking to a defenseman. I think they have something to say about how good a goalie is, don't they? Well, you know what? Just stop the puck, Kerry. Uh, that's all you right. got to do. Right. And then uh, let let the GM put the team there. Let the coaches coach. And uh, obviously, everybody has to be better on that team, right? But he's he's the the caliber of goalie where he has to steal games for his team. He's their their team's best player. And I, I don't know where he is in the salary cap. I imagine he's one of the highest paid guys in their team, along with Weber. You have to steal games when you're a goalie who's an elite goalie in the league, and you have a team that's a borderline team, and some nights doesn't have it. You got to steal games for your team, and you got to just steal a win where the other teams like we should have won that game if it weren't for him. And I don't know, you guys watch more of his games than I do. Has he, has he stole many games this year? I'm guessing no. He had a little run where they went six and two, and he was really, really good. But like Sid said, most of those nights it's been average. But there have also been nights where he's had no margin for error. Right. Like the offense, they score a lot they're of a young so. team, and they got bit by injuries as it is. So he's had to. If you give up more than three goals, that team's not winning. So it's been yeah. it's been an interesting moment. Just just uh, from a salary uh, standpoint, just to remind everybody, Carey Price ten and a half million per year on the cap. Shea Weber seven point eight million on the cap. Carey is thirty two. Shea Weber is thirty four years of age. When you uh, when you hear that's old, that's old. And, and, really and, and there's a lot of years left on those contracts. Um, when yeah. you when you hear Carey Price talk that way, though, Kevin, because look, I'm, I've been in this business a while. Tim's been this. We have bad days. Yeah, we're veteran guys here. We're quote unquote leaders, but we have bad days. Carey Price, so I've been told, Tim. All right. Carey Price had a bad day <laughs> last night. When you're a young guy in that room and you either hear that as it happens or after the fact, what do you think? I think he he plays in a Canadian market, arguably the you know the most prominent market in sports for for this for hockey, anyways. And I think on most nights he probably does a really good job of handling the media and staying positive and doing his job. So when he loses his cool and he says some things like this, I think it's an eye opener for the rest of the team and the young guys. Like, like holy, we've gotten to a point where our leader. And our guy who usually handles the media really well is just lost his cool. Like it, it's a wake up call for the rest of the team, I think. Uh, Kevin, before we let you go, we were talking about how often we showed uh, the Morgan Riley being danced by uh, Connor <laughs> McDavid. You did bring up Brooks like I had nothing to do with it. Uh, oh, I, ha- God. <laughs> I happened to find it on the computer uh, and I may or may not have it in front of me. Uh, let's. Let's take to the computer and have a look. Trip down memory lane here. Trip Kevin. down memory lane here. Oh, between oh, the legs. Oh, do you see how I try to chop him in the back though? After? Yeah, no, we did. We did, I did notice. No, it. I missed it. Let me see. We it might again, see the Mikhail. replay one more time let me see here. It again. Yeah. I, I gotta see Let's Kev see. try and let him have it here. We got some reaps coming up here. Oh, Kevin, in your it. defense, that's a really quick play. Like, yeah, I mean, you know what? That shouldn't happen though. That's and if you see, it's a three-three goal there. That's to tie the game. So. I mean, great gap there to start, and then yeah. get a little loose here, and then maybe go fishing, and then try to chop yeah. him. You did you gave him a couple One, taps, two. yeah. So a couple taps. Who's gave that him a goalie? Two-piece. Is that Ryan Miller there? Make a save. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Call me out, Melzy. He's chirping Miller years. <laughs> Millsy, how, make make a save and bail out your buddy. Oh, oh, that was man. a skill play, though, by like. I, I'll give him that. It was. I don't know. I think it, I think you're being a little hard on a, a yourself. One, I didn't realize. Like, I thought I thought the play developed and you had timed and then you go fishing. I was bang bang. Hey, I mean, you know what though? Luckily, that goal happened in Washington and nobody's ever seen that replay ever again. It did happen <laughs> on hockey Sorry. night in Canada in, in Toronto. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, that's, yeah, yeah. In, in, in Toronto, in Oilers yeah. Leafs game with Conor McDavid in Toronto. Yeah, there's a few more eyes on it. That, that's definitely. But, uh, I don't know if you know this. He did. He did trail him all the way to the blue line. 
You let so him know. He had, no, yeah. I mean, he should have. Well, that's no. that's called having a good gap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, good gap. I know. Good gap. I know, but it was the lost gap that you were worried about. <laughs> good gap. One day, one day I'll hey, have a good gap. Is this turning into a roast? Of no, 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 it's no, 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 no. I believe you played 800 and something more games no. in the NHL than I did. Have you? Uh, how about, let's end it this way. Have you remembered the name of that defense when the Canucks let go and they haven't been the same since? Have you remembered the name of the defense? No, but I think I played a lot like him. Okay, yeah. all right. All right. So again, enough. just text you play us like me. Remember. There you go, Kevin Bieksa from Newport Ju- Beach, California.